Welcome to the Liberati Mansion. Welcome to Under the Vegas Sun, looking at the people, the events, and the news surrounding Las Vegas and the entire Vegas Valley. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. We are live from the Liberace Mansion. In all the weeks that we have been in the mansion, one of the places that we have not gone to is the place where Liberace gained a lot of his insight, a lot of his great ideas, because right from this place, he could see the Las Vegas Strip, the lights, the excitement of what this town was all about. This, for the first time, you're seeing a part of the Moroccan room. And it was so very important to Lee and all of his friends. This is where he got a lot of his inspiration. And speaking about inspiration, it is really the same reason why we're here today with our special guest. He, too, gets a lot of inspiration. As a matter of fact, he's bringing to Las Vegas some of the newest ideas in hospitality. His name, Reno Armeni. You'll get to meet him in just a moment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Keith Evans at the Lion Habitat Ranch. We'd like you to come out and visit our ranch. There's 38 lions, a giraffe that paints, ostriches, emus, and birds. We do school tours, general admission, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and behind the scenes tours every day of the week. Besides coming in as general admission, you can also pay extra to help our animals, and you can feed the giraffe. You can feed one of the lions, or you can have Ozzy paint a custom canvas for you. You can also buy Ozzy paintings in the gift shop. While we do our demonstrations at 12 and 2 of Ozzy painting, all those canvases are available for purchase. In addition to everything you can do here in person, you can find us on the website, lionhabitatranch.org, where you can make your reservations online or buy your paintings online. Thank you very much. Please come. Hey, it's Mark Chinook from Monday's Dark, and you are watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. Innovation. It's a word a lot of people talk about, but finding innovation and creating innovation is some of the toughest things in the world to do. Even though society today has become so technical, innovation becomes so tough. Today on our program, we meet a man that innovation has become a part of his entire life. Part of the things that he has done, from, from one thing to another, it has been inspiration and innovation. His name, Reno Armeni. Welcome to our program. I appreciate it. Thank you, it. Steve. That you was know, quite an introduction. <laughs> you're quite a man, so it works out that way. You know, you're a long way from Brindisi, Italy. Yes. Long way. Right. It's where you were born. It's your, it's your home. Um, it, it, when you look back at where you are today, from this little town on the port city in the heel of Italy, to where you are today, did you ever think you'd make it here? No, <laughs> quite honestly, no. Um, actually, it all happened, uh, you know, uh, I failed in Greek and Latin, and <laughs> my father said to me, look, Let's go for a walk. So we, went, we took a walk by the port. And he said to me, son, you know, what, what do you want to do? Which is very unusual for somebody from South Italy in the early 60s. The mentality was very different, where all the kids had to be home in the same city. They couldn't leave. But my father thought different, you know? And I said, dad, I really want to go around the world. He said, really? I said, yes. So he encouraged me to take other school, and that's how I started uh, my career. You but know? this idea of innovation, this idea uh, of, of finding different ways to do things in the world, somewhat became natural to you. You did start, without a doubt, I in the world of, of, of business, uh, corporations like Marriott initially, eventually lucky enough to go to a wonderful organization called Disney. And a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, you were the one that actually helped put together the Grand Floridian yes, correct. in Disney World. Correct. That is innovation. Did it come from you? Or did it come from this desire that you've had all of these years to take care of others? Well, you know, I think uh, taking care of other people uh, came from my parents. 
uh, especially my mother, uh, always being very generous, uh, always looking after people. So was my grandparents. So it came very naturally to me. But also, you know, from a young age, I learned that in order to succeed in life, you have to be different. You have to be creative and different. You have always to look for the age. And I have to tell you that, uh, you know, Marriott taught me how to be an excellent manager. Disney taught me uh, to go to the limit as far as creativity is concerned. And um, I think you were there when I said the story about uh, my latest experience at Disney when I went back and I met some of the old employees who remind me of the magic that I created. It was magic. That I didn't even realize I created <laughs> magic. <laughs> <laughs> but it was magic and you the, created. And the day after, when I had lunch with the president of Disney, we actually laughed, thinking that we both of us never realized what we created. But that, well, flowing, ba flowing back to Las Vegas, I said to myself, you know what? That was the best thing I ever did in my life because she really motivated me to do more and more in life and to be more and more, more challenging myself to be more creative and be different. But Reno, that was, you came to America in the, in, in the 80s, right? Yes, you came, correct. You came to America in the, in March the 80s. March 1st, 1980, yeah. It was different then. It, mm. was, it was different than it is today. Do you feel as though today, in, in this world that we're all living in, that it's tougher for young people to find that, that innovation, that desire, that need to move forward in order to be successful? Steve, my concern with a younger generation, I'm sure my parents are concerned with me, right? Uh, but my concern with the younger generation is that they are so used to uh, living their life through iPad, iPhone, computer, that they're losing touch of the human touch. They really are. And I notice that when I meet with young managers in my business, I meet with a lot of young managers, uh, I, they have a tough time in having a conversation because they're so used to be, to answer people through the computer or the iPad or the iPhone, but when you are facing <coughs> somebody, they don't know how to handle it. You came to Las Vegas in the 90s. You came to Las Vegas at a time when this town was just beginning to, Absolutely, to, yeah. to, to blossom. And you came before everything was bought up by the corporations. Yes. I mean, even you came to Caesars at the time. Yes, sir. Caesars, that was before Caesars became ITT, yes. before all the corporations. Yes. It was just Caesars Palace. It allowed you to be this innovative Correct. individual. You know, I was very lucky <coughs> that I joined Caesars in the last few years of the Roman Empire. <laughs> After that, Caesar became part of an empire, right? And I was very lucky to have a president who allowed me to do whatever I wanted to do. He basically told me, Reno, we've been waiting for somebody for many months. Just go out there and do the best you can. And, you know, people talk about celebrity chef and so on, but, you know, I was actually the first one to go to Hong Kong and find a chef for our Empress Court restaurant that we paid at that time $5 million <laughs> to build. And I paid the chef $120,000 in 1989 <laughs> to come to Las Vegas. <laughs> and this guy, uh, every plate that he presented was like a little village. So already there, there was this interest and this, and this um, desire to give people something different and new. I know you have a, a new venture that's going to be opening here in a short time. We're going we're to talk about that. But the one part of you yeah. that, to me, stretches through everything that you do, everything that you do, is this part of you that believes, maybe because of the heritage, maybe because of the way you were raised, believes that you give back mm -hmm. from where this is, from where this heart is. 
you started a number of organizations, the Epicurean Foundation, yes. which I first met you many, many years ago, to now the Las Vegas Business Academy that gives young people great opportunities in life. It is your belief that we should all give back, right? Yes. Well, I always tell my children that um, I was very lucky all my life uh, to be where I am today. I had a lot of help from it, from a lot of people. And, uh, you know, this town has given me so much that the least I can do, I give back. And uh, one thing I learned is that in my time, and uh, nobody should say that because our time is today, really, but in my time, uh, college uh, was only two years. And as I advanced in my career and I met different people, I noticed that those two years really made a difference in me. So I decided that education is very fundamental today. And a college education is not necessarily anymore the answer. You have to, today, to be competitive, you have to take a PH, you have to take a JD, you have to take a master, you have to take an MBA. Because everybody now goes to college. So I was lucky to find, look, I have 40 board members, or maybe 45, I don't remember anymore. But one greater than the other one, and together, uh, we've been able to put this amazing program where we provide scholarship, full scholarship. And for give young people a chance that maybe they wouldn't have had before. No, but the most important thing beside the mind it, uh, is the opportunity for them to work with us. This is not shadowing. A lot of companies, this is a shadowing problem. We don't have a shadowing program. We actually, these people do have to work with us thousand hours a year. So they work in a marketing, sales, distribution, accounting, judges, lawyer, you name it. it we have them all. And it's all about this whole idea of creating the better tomorrow. We're going to take a break for a couple seconds. Yes. When we come back, I want to talk about Reno's idea of a better tomorrow. Reno's idea <laughs> of things that we haven't even known about or, or thought about when it comes to hospitality, taking care of people, you have this <laughs> amazing idea that you're going to start in Las Vegas. And when we come back, we'll, we'll talk about it. Okay, thank you. It, it, is, it is just that. It's an amazing idea that, I'll give you a hint. What do you think about robots today? You haven't even seen what it can do. We'll talk about that in just a couple of seconds. Stay with us. With the many recent changes and focus on immigration law, now more than ever is the time to seek the help you need from an attorney you can trust. As an immigrant myself, I know the many difficulties and hardships involved in immigrating to this great country. With more than 10 years of experience in handling immigration cases, our firm can provide the necessary answers and solutions to your needs. Call Calderon Law today so we can work together to help you get the peace of mind you and your loved ones deserve. Hi, I'm Frankie Shinta, downtown's king of entertainment. You're watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. When's the last time you went into your favorite restaurant or bar and, and had a great meal and, and somebody came to you and said, uh, would you like a drink? And you said, sure, can you mix one up for me? And they do. And sometimes it doesn't come out exactly what you wanted. Well, now there might be a way to perfect that. <laughs> Once again, our very special guest, Reno Armeni. Welcome back to our program. Thank you. Okay. Robots. <laughs> I, listen, I, I'm from an era when, when you remember George Jetson and yes. his robot that <laughs> yes. brought him everything in yes. the world. Had, she had a little skirt on. It was, it, it was an adorable robot. 
you have taken this idea of robotics to another level. You are soon going to open in Las Vegas a bar and restaurant that has, uh, uh, the only way I can describe them, I'll describe them as dancing robots. It's the only way that I can <laughs> describe them. You tell me how yeah. you would describe it. Well, you know what? Uh, I was asked that, that question before. I, I think that we, what we have created is a combination of high technology, uh, creativity, craftsmanship. That's what we have created. In, by the way, the name is Tipsy Robot, I so I can tell you that. But, uh, you know, uh, that's what we've been able to create, you know? So. There, there is a part of the world that we live in today where you sometimes you go to the same restaurant, you see the same thing, you order the same food, everything's the same, the same, the same, the yes. same, the same, the same, yes. the same. Yes, correct. What gave Reno this idea that, you know what, <laughs> I'm not going to be the same. I'm even going to go beyond being different. I'm going to do this. I was waiting for you to ask me that question <laughs> <laughs> because I am so frustrated. <laughs> Let me tell you why. You know, I love this town. I think we have the most amazing executives in this town, more than any other city. But, you know, uh, it really bothers me that we are, all, we are always trending behind New York by five or ten years. And it just drives me crazy. And, uh, and I said to myself, you know, I wish and I hope that one day I can bring to Las Vegas something that is going to be 10 years ahead of everybody else. And, you know, it just happened that my partner, David, um, three years ago went to San Francisco at the Google Eye show and uh, saw the first prototype of this robot and contact uh, our partners in Italy from MegaShaker. And, uh, and we made a deal, and we are, I think we are on the third prototype. I already know they're working on the fourth one, which is pretty amazing. And uh, I'm excited because I just feel like I've been in this town since 89. I wanted to give a gift. This is my gift. Okay, don't so go any further. No, no. I, I, I want to now show the audience <laughs> what this tipsy robot does and what it looks like, and, and, and I think Watch this, you're gonna enjoy this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> every time I look at that, I absolutely love it. It is. It is as much Reno and entertainment as it is yeah. making a drink. It is that next level. It is that, as you said, 10 years in advance of everybody else. You know, I think that people are going to enjoy the interaction. You know, here you are for the first time, you are telling a robot, hey, this is what I want, okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the most amazing thing is that it's not only about the drink, it's how they move. And they can also shake it for you, they can stare it. Uh, they can James add Bond will be very happy yeah, to yeah, hear yeah. that. You know, they can add fruit, they can add sugar, so it's not just making a drink. That's why I said it's an art as well. They actually behave like a mixologist. That's what they do. So, so this wonderful place is gonna be at the Miracle Mile Shops yes. inside Planet Hollywood. Yes. My only fear, Reno, I'll be honest with you, is you're not gonna have enough room for everybody to wanna to get in there and watch these things. I know. And you have two of them, right? We have two robots. Two yes. robots. Yes. And they will, they will dance throughout the night. Well, you know, the robots can dance and uh, we are planning to have a show at certain time of the night, I don't know exactly when, where our, uh, the girls who work on the floor are called Galactic Ambassadors, and they will, per they will perform with the robots. Galactic Ambassadors. Yeah, Galactic Ambassadors. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> and they have very special uniforms. And we also have a small human bar, uh, 
to take care of the overflow. A human bar. I yeah. like the way you said yeah, that. Yeah, because we have a <laughs> robot bar. We have a robot bar and they have the human bar. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I want to precise something because a lot of people at the beginning said, oh, they're going to take away jobs from people. That, that's not true. What I want people to understand today is that the robots are an attraction, are an entertainment. Not different from the sign on the street or the fountain of the lodge. Listen. That's what we are creating. Wh when I was there, when the first time the Mirage Hotel fountains um, became the volcano. Right. I was there the first time that the, uh, that the ships in front of, the, which are not no longer there, the ships Treasure in front Island. of Treasure <laughs> Island had yeah. their battles. Yeah. I was there the first time that the fountains at the Bellagio, mm. the amazing fountain at the Bellagio went off. It is becoming a part of the entertainment of Las Vegas. And, and, and I think that the innovation that you see, this amazing challenge to, to give people more than just what is normally there right. is, is a wonderful experience. Like I said, Steve, uh, you know, especially in Las Vegas, we, we are so, we are such a unique town, right? That in order for us to compete with Orlando, for instance, uh, we have to be so competitive and so unique. And we have to, I, I, I want to invite today, invite all the people who work in our hotel business to go and look for things around the world that are very unique so we can add to the robots and make this town even more unique and more entertaining. As we said earlier in the show, you've been here for a long time. You've been here during the, during the height of the growth of, of Las Vegas. You've seen, I'll say it, you've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly of Las Vegas. You've seen the, the pluses and you've seen the minuses. You are a philanthropist, you're a restaurateur, you're a food and beverage expert, but more importantly, you're a man who has this vision of, of what I think Las Vegas is all about. Say, say what you will about Las Vegas. There's a lot of people out there that, who've never been here that don't know what the real Las Vegas is. But this is a town based upon one word, and that's hospitality. Yes. And, and do you fear we're losing that? Uh, I hate to uh, use words of criticism, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I believe so. I, I came from um, the world, of a true world of hospitality. But I also understand that the corporate world today has greater demands on the bottom line. And I, it is my sincere hope you know, life is a cycle, right? You and I know that more than the younger generation, right? So I hope that eventually this cycle will take us back to a greater way of become more hospitality oriented, uh, where the service is what it used to be, where our interaction with guests, you know, we used to go on the floor and talk to people. It is that taking, doesn't exist anymore. It is taking care of people. Right, taking care of people. Right. People say that that's what they want to do, but at the end of the day, they have so much pressure on them that they are stuck in the office in front of the computer trying to get the information to their bosses rather than be on the floor taking care of people. I, so want, I want to congratulate you. I think, I think this whole idea of what you're doing, this, this whole belief that you that you create, and you are creating that next generation of hospitality and entertainment is a wonderful thing for all of us, but even a greater thing for Las Vegas. And I'm very, very proud of you, and I'm proud oh, to call you a friend, you. and I, I just think what you're doing is amazing. Thank you very much for being thank with you. us. Thank you. Thank you so we much. We really do appreciate it. Thank now, you for the opportunity. Anytime. Now, it, it's, it's at, and it will be uh, open the 20, starting on the 27th, 28th, and 29th of June at the Miracle Mile shops at Planet Hollywood, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, even if a, you don't drink, <laughs> it can do a lot of things with just soda. I think it can, anyway. <laughs> but just go watch it and see what innovation is all about. We'll have some closing words in just a minute. Stay with us. News. In today's world, news has become even more important in our lives. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. For some 40 years, Las Vegas has been my home 
and it's been good to me. Now, I want to give back. That's why I started The Now Report, the independent voice newspaper, fair, balanced, unbiased, online and mobile, and it's free. The time has come for an independent voice because news is important. You know, it's amazing a place like the Moroccan Room can give you ideas, like Reno, getting ideas and then bringing them to forefront. It's just an amazing thing, and I'm telling you, this idea of a robotic bar and entertainment, it will be something else. Reno, thank you very much for being with us. Talking about something else, well, I'll tell you what. One of the big groups in all of country music will soon be coming to Las Vegas. They're called Rascal Flats, and they've just announced they'll start an eight-day tour in Las Vegas beginning on the 6th of October at the Venetian Hotel. Rascal Flats has sold more than 22 million albums. And now, they're coming to Las Vegas. I'm telling you, it will be a show you won't want to miss. Until the next time, be safe and enjoy life under the Vegas sun. Hello, this is Keith Evans at the Lion Habitat Ranch. We'd like you to come out and visit our ranch. There's 38 lions giraffe that paints, ostriches, emus, and birds. We do school tours, general admission, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and behind the scenes tours every day of the week. Besides coming in as general admission, you can also pay extra to help our animals, and you can feed the giraffe. You can feed one of the lions, or you can have Ozzy paint a custom canvas for you. You can also buy Ozzy Paintings in the gift shop. While we do our demonstrations at 12 and 2 of Ozzy Painting, all those canvases are available for purchase. In addition to everything you can do here in person, you can find us on the website, lionhabitatranch.org, where you can make your reservations online or buy your paintings online. Thank you very much. Please come. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. I've been proud to host the TV show Under the Vegas Sun. We've had mayors and entertainers and some of the true movers and shakers of Las Vegas. Well, we're growing again. We'll now be seen in 209 cities in America through our network, Walk TV, as well as in six foreign countries and in Las Vegas. We'll also be seen four times each week on Cox Communications, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m., and now Sundays at 7 p.m. on channels 1096 and 96. I just wanted to say thank you. has been a presentation of VATV.